Hi, and welcome to Sweet B, our live stream series highlighting artists in and around our area. We do this here at Professor B Studios in downtown Winston-Salem, and tonight we're excited to have not just a friend of the studio, but a friend of the show, um, someone we've, we've had the opportunity to sit down with in the past off camera and talk and get to know a little bit and learn a little bit about what he was doing, um, but also a little bit about his story. And I'm excited to share some of that with you guys tonight, um, but then also to hear a little bit about what he does. So if you would please help me welcome Jeff Wall, also known as Big Dumb Hick. <laughs> How you doing, man? Hi, Mama. Good, good, good. <laughs> thank you, first of all, for being here. Well, thank you for um, having me. That, without a doubt. And then, a, and then an even bigger thanks because as as we've we've talked and dove into little things um, for your service because you're you're retired Navy. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, well, I never know how to respond. So well, thank you for your service. I'm like, well, thanks for the check. You yeah, know? I mean, yeah. That's it. You're you're also job, you're also you know? welcome. <laughs> um, so I, I grew up around around military. I was born. My my dad was in the Air Force, and then he was a police officer, and then joined the Army from there. And he's Army Ranger and Delta Force and all that. When he retired, do I need to talk slow? Um, he's not here. <laughs> okay. um, sorry. <laughs> um, you might be watching though. Um, but I, I from being around it, kind of gathered some of the, the schedule and the, the hecticness of the life and that kind of stuff and, and the training and the, you know, the regiment stuff. And I mean, and it may be different from branch to branch. I don't, I don't remember him being in the Air Force, but I re vividly remember him being in the Army. Um, and so when I learned that at some point while being in the Navy, you picked up and started carrying with you a guitar and taught yourself to play, it's not usually the picture that gets painted. So I'm just wondering, like, why? And then... What role did that play as you were serving? I mean, what was it, you know, why, why guitar and, and why something else you have to carry with you everywhere? We were sitting off the coast of Beirut and I'd read every book on board. There was nothing <laughs> left to read. You know, I'd, I'd, most of them I'd read two or three times. Some guys uh, that I worked with had brought guitars. Uh, I'd taken, I don't know, three or four lessons when I was 11 and remembered three or four chords and just picked it up and. I hadn't put one down since. It's yeah. like, you know, I feel naked without one. No That's, kidding. Yeah, I don't know why. Uh, why not? Yeah, no, <laughs> so, I, I get know, it, I get I, it. I don't know, you know. Um, so were there opportunities while you were still in to play? Or, I mean, was it a oh, very, yeah, like, a no, for you no, thing, or did like, you? No, I, I seriously took a guitar with me everywhere. Yeah. I mean, so uh, all, my, all my pictures of of uh, Spain and of Italy, or, or me with a guitar, you know? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I, I go find street musicians to play with, or I go sit on the, sit on the plaza or, or, or a park and just play. You so know? How, how is that received as, a, as a, an American serviceman coming to a foreign country to sit down with a street musician? Is that, well, was that, was that I don't know how it would be now, was well, that well received? Well, would make or? fun of me because, you know, they said, uh, they're all hanging out with the bums again. <laughs> you know? I'm like, sure. dude, they're my people. I was going to uh, say, what was that like for you, though? It was fun. I got to meet new people. Uh, uh, I got to uh, play different music. I got, you know, I got, the, the thing about the Navy, I grew up in Middle Tennessee in, okay. in, a, in a small farming town. And the Navy allowed me to broaden my horizons and see the world. Mm. And I wanted to meet people. And I wanted to meet people from different cultures and different backgrounds and, uh, than me. You know, I wanted to it? find people who thought different than me, that yeah. who behaved and played different than me. And, you know, and I was in split Croatia and I'm, I'm playing with some guy who had a bomb fall on his house. And he was in split to get his toe. He, He'd broken his toe when the bomb fell on his house, and he was just sitting out there playing. And so I started playing with him, and we oh played goodness. all night long, and uh, just had a ball, you know, playing old folk tunes and yeah. cowboy tunes. And I'm in Bari, Italy, and I'd, uh, uh, I, I, there was a, I used to like to hit the music stores in Europe because they're, they're different. Uh, sure, you yeah. Know, the CD Without stores are different. And I found a, 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 a Django Reinhardt CD. And, and I was familiar with Stepan Grappelli. I didn't know that much about Django. Okay, it's, so because I know because I think I know where you're going with this. But but real quick for the people who don't know and don't for the not the non-jazz heads out there, can you kind of say who those who those people are? Stepan Grappelli is a is a is a violinist. 
Uh, and Django Reinhardt is a guitar player who uh, Willie Nelson counts as his largest influence. Right. Uh, he plays gypsy jazz. Uh, he was in a uh, he was in a fire when he was young, so he had like just a claw for a hand. And so all of his work is single string. Yeah. You know, he, he doesn't do much cording. It's all, but it's uh, it's his timing and things like that. It's yeah. just it's interesting stuff that I can't do. Right. And, but I wanted to listen to it. In uh, you know, I'm a bad bluegrass guitar player. <laughs> and, uh, and what do you mean by that? Sorry, I do want to get back to the story. No, well, the cardinal sin in bluegrass is slop. Mm. You, you know, they, you'll see stickers on people's case that say no slop. Right. I'm a sloppy guitar yeah. player. You know, I'm sloppy at everything. <laughs> and uh, I love playing bluegrass. Uh, uh, I grew up in Nashville. I know a lot of really, really, really good guitar players. Sure. And I am not a really, really, really <laughs> good guitar player. You know? I used to, I used to I, I, I'd tell people like, I. I can play guitar, I'm not a guitarist. Right. Those are two very different things. Well, I'll call myself That's a guitar for me. player, <laughs> but I also, I have a mandolin. Okay. And people call me, a I'm like, no, I'm a mandolin owner. I'm <laughs> not a mandolin player. Occasionally you'll see me pull it out. That's, but, how, you know, yeah, that's how I feel about that banjo back there. Yeah, I think. No, it's like, it, I'm it a mandolin owner. beats me up more than I play it. So, so you, go, you find the CD. Yeah, and, and, and so we're in Bari, Italy, which is on the back side of the boot. Uh, if you're looking at Italy, mm -hmm. and um, I'm in a park with a buddy of mine, uh, uh, Billy Pierce. Hey, Billy. And uh, uh, some old man comes up. He sees he sees the CD, and he doesn't speak much English, but he's telling us about what we were able to figure out. He told us about when he was a kid. He got to see the hot the hot club, which was Grappelli mm -hmm. and, uh, right. and Django playing in Paris. Oh, man. And, you know, uh, and I'm thinking, now this is cool. And, and you know, and I'm thinking, yeah, you, could, you know, believe nothing that you hear and only <laughs> half of what you see. Sure. And so he takes my guitar and he starts playing Sweet Georgia Brown, just tearing it up. And I'm trying to keep up on a and I'm, but you know, yeah. that was just cool. Yeah. You know, it was yeah. cool Without that I got doubt. to do that. It's, uh, music's allowed me to do more cool stuff and meet more cool people uh, and play with more cool people uh, around campfires and yeah. things like that. You know, I've, I've played with Bela Fleck. I've played with no uh, kidding around yeah. a campfire. You know uh, uh, Zach Brown around I mean, a campfire. Pulling up uh, my heartstrings now, but I'd love you know, Bela Fleck. Bela chewed my butt one day. We were sitting around a campfire and um, now was this Fleck tones and everything? I mean, was this no? This is oh, okay. Okay. This okay. Just Bela okay. Okay. A friend of mine, Casey Dreesen, and uh, all the Sugar Hill Records people used to camp together at Merle Fest. Yeah. And I pull out my guitar and I'm playing around and Bela picks up my mandolin and starts playing that a little bit while we're just, everybody's just talking, just, nothing just going on. Just a little on. bit. <laughs> so then Bela goes and gets his banjo out. Uh -huh. and, you know, and I, I get a case of real self-conscious and, and <laughs> Bela jumps on me and he says, look, he says, quit being down on yourself. You're the reason I went to get my banjo out of the car. I wasn't uh -huh. planning on playing. He said, but we're having too much fun for me to walk away from this. He said, shut up and play. You know, man. it's like, you know, uh, that's cool. You know, okay. yeah, I'm, sweet, loved, man. I'm jealous now. That's, that's, that's really you good know, stuff. So it's, it's just being in the right, I got lucky. I've been lucky to be in the right place at mm. the right time. And uh, just try to be nice to people. And you also, nice things happen. I mean, capitalize is the wrong word, but you weren't afraid to stand in that situation either. I mean, from what I'm hearing, because a lot of people can be in that right place, right time and be like, dude, I just want to play. And exactly. That's it. Exactly. You know, and, and, and you're, you're and I've looked out there across the it. fire and seen somebody standing over, you know, I look across the fire and there's Tim O'Brien or somebody. I didn't, they're not there because of me. Right. I, we're just, we're occupying the same place, yep. doing the same thing at the same time. And it's just, pass across and yeah, it's cool. cool. You know, it's, it's just very cool. cool. Yeah. It's very cool. So, so what brought you back to North Carolina? I grew up in Middle Tennessee. Right. And uh, I joined the Navy to find somebody to date that I wasn't kin to. Uh, <laughs> pretty much the truth. I'm kin about most of Wilson <laughs> County. Okay. But um, I ended up joining the Navy and then I did 20 years. My wife said she wanted to go west. Well, this is west of the ocean, of the Atlantic Ocean, so we came here. I took a job, uh, bought a house, made the first house payment, got laid off from the job. Oh, man. And uh, I've been here ever since. It was, yeah. I've been here since 2000. Okay. Uh, made lots of friends, played lots of music. Uh, you know. 
It's fantastic. I've had fun. No, I'm it's just... yeah. I, I, I appreciating the story more and more. Like it, just the longer we talk. Um, so I know you've been doing shows in and around this area, um, but I also know that just from talking to you and stuff that you're trying, you're picking up stuff out of town. Got. I said on Raleigh, Charlotte, that kind of stuff. How how far out are you? I know how far out you're willing to play. How far out are you playing right now? Uh, I'm playing I'm playing in Hillsborough uh, Saturday night. Friday night I'm playing at the Ramp Kit. I'm opening upstairs at the Ramp Kit at the at the Gas Hill Drinking Room. Yeah. I'm opening for the guy who's opening for Arbor King. I'm steadily working my I, way up to that the counts. bottom. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. not opening for I'm, either one of them. I'm so. there. I'm there. <laughs> I, I'm taking the death of Ramp Kit. Let's, you know, was wouldn't let me do this. Uh, yeah. And then Saturday, I played in Hillsboro. Okay. At the King Street, uh, King Street Bar. I played uh, last Saturday night in Dallas, North Carolina, oh. which is outside of Gastonia. I didn't even know we had a Dallas. North I didn't know it either. Fair enough. And, yeah. and if you don't have a GPS, to anybody you're not going to find it. <laughs> it, it was a Dallas Brewing Company. Great people. Really. Small, small room. Uh, sounded good. I had fun. They treated me well. That's awesome. Uh, I've got several things coming up around. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I, I'll, I'll play anywhere I can find a place to play. Okay. If um, you're willing to pay me, I'm willing to come. There you go. That's that. Okay. So come come and find him and pay him, him so he can so he can he can go do those things. Um, I want to talk about two more things. One of them kind of brief, just because I noticed it and I couldn't let it go because you you you. I claim, thought my hat covered it up. No, 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 no. You, you, you claim the name of Big Dumb Hick, but in the in, in your write up on your website, there's a subtle nod to of mice and men. Oh. And I'm just wondering <laughs> where does that come from, and why, why that, why that character, and and why that story. I'm six seven. I weigh three hundred thirty three pounds. It means I'm only half evil. <laughs> and uh. Fair enough. And, you know, and I wear I wear bib overalls because you know they're flattering to the full grown man. There you go. Uh, <laughs> but people see somebody my size and Harry, and, who talks like this, and you automatically assume this is some big stupid yokel. Sure. And so uh, I used to be a freelance writer. I wrote for several magazines: No Pression, Paste, Harp, uh, Country Music, Country Weekly, a bunch of things like that. No kidding. And so I was on a music, there used to be a music industry bulletin board I was on, and I took the name Big Dumb Hick, just, if you can't laugh at yourself, you know, right. what's the point? Right. And, uh, and you know, there's also that Southern thing about where you play up your, your perceived weaknesses mm -hmm. to put the other people uh, to, uh, to try to get them that's to the, be a little bit overconfident. I think that's a little bit of the inherent comedy writer in you. Oh, yeah, yeah there's probably some of that too. Yeah. So, you know, so that was the Big Dumb Hick thing. Uh, the the Lenny Small mm. is, uh, I don't know. I yeah. just like to read. You sure. know? I've no, always it's... been a voracious reader. And how many people know who Lenny Small is? I was just is? wondering, I saw that on there, I went, wait a minute. There's Most people don't catch there. that reference. Yeah, you know, it, it, it says, you know, it says uh, he's Lenny Small with a guitar in his hands. It's, you know, most people, <laughs> you know, people are like going, who is just, this? Sure, and they just, they just go with it. Um, okay, and so one more thing before we go, because we're, we're gonna go to break, and then we'll hear you play a couple songs. Um, if people want to go see your calendar, follow you, find you on social media, where, uh, website, anything, if you kind of let them know, because we're gonna take a break, and what I tr always try to encourage people to do is while we're on this break, go like your page, go follow your stuff, go, go see where you you're gonna be. You can find me on uh, YouTube, uh, look for Big Dumb Hick. You can find me on Facebook, look for Big Dumb Hick. You can go to my website, bigdumbhick.com. But I gotta warn you to begin with, uh, I usually play to adult audiences. And so some of my material is adult oriented. Uh, I mean, I can play family friendly sets and am and, and, and happy to do so, but I can also get a little blue. So I was sure. in the Navy for right, 20 okay, years. Right, 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 yeah. I know all the curse <laughs> words. Uh, so so when, but on the website, okay, that's what on, I was gonna my, ask. on my website, yep. There's a bunch of there's a bunch of songs that you can listen to, and I believe I've got them all rated, whether it's PG or whether it's R, as okay. far as either language or the story. I'm in the process on YouTube of putting the lyrics up for all the stuff, so you, you can look at that because uh, I have inadvertently offended some people, yeah. not meaning to. Uh, 
So, you know. And then, you know, sometimes maybe when you mean to. Well, no, it's you know, different it's... when you mean to. <laughs> that's right. You know, that's I'm right. all right that's when right. I mean to. Sometimes you just, some people need to be offended. But, you uh, know, I, I get it. I don't want to make anybody uncomfortable unnecessarily. And, 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 and I think not only people who are watching now who may be getting ready to go check out your stuff, but also people who book you and stuff probably greatly appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a fantastic thing. J thank you so much for sitting and talking with me. Um, we're going to be right back in just a few minutes well, to check out a couple of songs, without a doubt, man. We'll be right back in a few minutes. Hey, this is a song called uh, Check Out Time. My wife and I were in a hotel, and uh, my wife is a rule follower. If there's a rule, she believes that they exist for that they exist for a reason. And my belief is that the reason is to help stupid people. And uh, and I usually try to follow my own moral compass instead. But she's a rule follower, and she's trying to teach me how to behave in polite society. But what was going on is we were getting ready to leave the next morning, and she kept asking, what time is it? And I'd tell her, and she'd say, what time's checkout time? Checkout time's 11. Okay. Two minutes later, what time is it? It's 10, whatever. Checkout time's 11. So this song ended up pretty much writing itself while we were uh, trying to load up and pack out. Where's my teeth? Where's that bottle of love to leave? Grab my coat and my guitar. Run downstairs down to the car. Time's now 2.57. Check out time's at 11. Time's now 2.57. Check out time's at 11.
and the crowd goes wild. This next song is called New Wayfaring Strangers. It's very topical today, but I wrote it a couple years ago. I wrote it when the uh, Syrian crisis just started, and people were fleeing Syria, and you would see them striking across the Mediterranean and blow up kids' life raft, anything they could do to try to get them and their families safe. And I got to thinking, what would happen if Canada lost their mind and I had to grab all my crap and go now? And so I ended up writing this song. What bothers me is that it's still relevant today. Oh. I sent it to a friend of mine, Brink, Mark Brink, Brinkman, who helped me with the, uh, the chord arrangements, and I'm grateful for that. Blessings 
come the morning and we'll be gone We're just fully fed strangers Out here searching for a home Peace and blessings be upon you Come the morning, we'll be gone We're just poor wayfair strangers Out here lurching for home We're just poor wayfair strangers Out here searching for home Thank you Thank you, folks. I appreciate it. Man, that's fantastic stuff. Dude, Jeff, thanks again so much Thank you, for boss. being on the show, man. I, I absolutely it. had a blast having you here. Um, talking stories, unexpected ones, and uh, and getting to hear you play some. And I didn't even say any bad words. I know. I know. I know. I was, you know, I was braced the whole time. We had the sensor button ready. No, I'm just kidding. No, I just, we, we were good. I, 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 seriously, like, Truly appreciate you making time coming. I on really that kind of appreciate stuff. being asked. I really appreciate the opportunity. So, um, real quick, everybody, like, make sure you go follow this guy's stuff. Go check him out. If you liked what you heard tonight, go see him live. Um, he'll be at Gas Hill this coming Friday, and that's a free show. Yeah, five to seven, free, and I'll have T-shirts and CDs. I got a bunch of stuff because I want your money. Even better, go support the guy. Um, and then one more time, where they can, where can they find you on social and online? Uh, BigDumbHick.com. That's all one word. Big Dumb Hick. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, holler at me. Uh, you can find me on my website. You can find me on YouTube. I'm not smart enough to Twitter except to troll a certain <laughs> individual who I shall not mention. Appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> so go, go do those things. Um, go like his stuff. And we always appreciate, uh, like, like our page, go follow us, keep up to date with what we've got going on. And uh, we'll hope to see you guys back in two weeks. Have a good night. Jeff, thanks again. Man. Appreciate, I appreciate it, it so much. Thank you, man.